Hi guys, Joe here. What a day I've had. Um, got to the field to go and check on my horses and my mare had blood all in her tail. And I was like, oh my God, what's she done? So I checked about legs, assuming it was about legs anyway, the dock, which is the fleshy part, the tail underneath. She'd slashed all of that, I assume on barbed wire. Um, so I had to get the vet out. She's also piled on the pounds while she's been out over these last few days because it's been such a we've had such nice weather, warm weather. Um, and she is a horse, so I do have to monitor her weight. So I've been putting her muzzle on and she's been refusing point blank to eat. Now, me being soft, I've been taking it off. Well, today I decided I wasn't taking it off. So five hours I stood around and she just walked around feeling sorry for herself, head down, following my gelding around not understanding why I've put this contraption on, on her face. Sat in the field, because I was starting to get a bit, a bit perplexed after five hours of waiting to see if she'd actually eat something, because I was determined I wasn't going to take it off. And um, disemote my emotional freedom technique. Any of those of you that don't know what that is, you tap certain meridian points. There you go. A little bit of a, a lesson there in emotional freedom technique and it releases energy blocks it's really powerful and a few years back I actually um one of my cats was getting recurring mouth ulcers and I used to use it on myself and of course we can say to ourselves the placebo effect you know um but when you see the power of it with with your you working on your animals so Jake had this mouth ulcer that kept recurring I did emotional freedom technique with him next day it had gone never returned so it is a really powerful if you want to learn how to do it it's really simple um brad yates is someone that i follow um so if you do have emotional blocks that you feel you want to get rid of as i said there are other people out there but brad yates is the guy that i normally turn to anyway me and dan are going to be doing a video hopefully um this week we were supposed to be doing one um tomorrow but because nancy has done what she's done I want to, she's on a course of antibiotics, which I'm not very happy about because I don't like giving pharmaceutical products to my animals. I don't like taking them. Um, but for something like the gash that she's got, you know, we've, we've got, I've got to make sure that it doesn't get infected. Um, but I'm going to be giving them homeopathy as well. And because the way homeopathic works, it's microdosing, so you have to leave it. So anyway, long story short, we were hoping to do a video tomorrow. That's not going to happen. So hoping on Friday now. Um, it's going to be a follow-on from the um, Antarctica website and we're going to be going deep. So, he's, um, we're going to talk about the Freemasons, John Dee, William Shakespeare, um, Francis Bacon, the Alien Agenda. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a really interesting, interesting discussion. But just following on from um, the alien, alien agenda, which is um, the whole transhuman agenda, putting us more into matter to completely obliterate subconscious, sorry, our consciousness. I'm going to read something from Tom Montauk, and that's the reason why I've come on um, this evening, even though I'm, I'm dog tired and I'm, I'm just about to watch a J Dreamer's video. Um, he's going to be on the conversation with Jack, Chat GPT. Um, a lot of the truth is are, are actually coming out and, and um, having conversation conversations and asking chat GPT questions. Of course, I did um, a video on Tom Montauk's um, the questions that he 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 asked, and just it, they're just highlighting how intelligent this artificial intelligence is. Um, I believe it's not human. Um, I believe it's demiurgic technology, alien technology, whatever. Um, but he posted in his Telegram group last night something which I found really interesting. So he had a question asked on um, on one of his videos. Now, bear in mind that we are in, those of us who are aware, we understand that this is a spiritual war that we're in. Um I've just started reading Tom's book as it happens. And it, it's quite complex. Oh, just knocked my camera there. Sorry, guys. Not that you care. Um, so, Gnosis, Alchemy, Grail, Ark, and the Demiurge. It's really interesting. Um, but there's th there's three phases um, to this spiritual war that we are in. 
And if memory serves, in 1000 BC was when we switched over to the second phase, which is the phase that we are in now. Um, and the third phase is World War Three. Again, if memory serves. Um, but yeah, there are three phases and everything switched in 1000 um what at 1000 bc and what we have to do as humanity and this is why i started this youtube channel is and i know i i literally have like 193 followers i may get 80 to 150 views but if i can just plant seeds in a handful of people to get them away from following the truth narrative of sharing the fear propaganda and questioning this reality and just planting that seed of I need to be, need to be moving away from that and I need to be concentrating on that and that 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 is improving your consciousness um, and being awake isn't about buying into their propaganda at all and it's a lesson that I learned um a good few months ago now i still get drawn in sometimes but i have become very strict on what i share so um one of his followers asked on one of his channels how can one start the process of the actual shift what can we do what can we do to consciously change our consciousness at a deep level answer traditionally in schools of esoteric esoteric development the shift consists of two pathways done in parallel. And this is another reason why I'm concentrating on the esoteric side of things because it is really important because it's deep knowledge that they want to keep hidden from us. It's there to be found, but it takes time and effort to actually understand it. And that's how we consciously grow. So one, weeding the garden, AKA the long path, deprogramming, de-mechanizing, healing and fixing the psyche and having discipline to not fall back into old patterns. Two, planting and watering the seeds, aka the short path, identifying with the higher, better version of yourself, resonating with spirit and love and wisdom, making inner contact with the soul, spirit, embodying positive values. So one is about dealing with old broken negative and the other is about connecting and resonating with the new, better positive. Paul Brunton, in his book, The Short Path to Enlightenment, which is another book I've now downloaded. I've got so many books that I've downloaded. <laughs> oh my gosh. If we do have that um, Carrington event in September, I've certainly got enough to read, that's for sure. Um, anyway, sorry to um, go off on a tangent. Paul Brunton, in his book, The Short Path to Enlightenment, gets, into this, gets to this in a succinct way. If you need more info, if you need more info, but the above is the gist. If you only do one of these paths, you'll likely fail. Like if you only ever do shadow work and deprogramming, you'll get stuck there and not actually grow into embodying your higher self. Or if you try to only focus on the, on the positive without dealing with the negative, you'll be okay for days or weeks, but then fall back and crash hard into old patterns, which are always lurking under the surface due to not, not being dealt with. And I think that's what I do. Um, I have weeks where I feel great because... I've meditated, I've done emotional freedom technique, I've worked on the shadow, um, but I know my triggers and if those triggers pop up, then I fall back into old ways. And one of the things that I've found that I do is my old, one of my old ways is actually turning to the junk food. Like today, for example, I was gonna have a clean eating day because I got to the stables and Nancy's done what she's done to her tail. Um, it's emotionally affected me, so, I, so I've eaten junk. But anyway, I, I digress. I'm hoping, the reason why I digress is because I'm hoping that you can, you, you um, um, identify with your patterns of where you may fall down. You know, we're all only human. Um, but it's about recognising the triggers. And it's not about the falling, it's how quickly you build yourself up. I remember my dad saying to me years ago, fitness isn't isn't about... Um, how quickly you can run the race it's actually how quickly you recover after you've run the race and obviously the quicker that you recover the fitter that you're getting and I suppose it's the same with with the mind the quicker you can pull yourself out of the hole 
the fitter you, you the, the fitter your mind is becoming to be able to recognize the triggers feel what you're feeling but then bring yourself back up into the positive um but i also want to highlight that it's not just all about being positive and that being a false positive and digging the, and and burying the negative because your subconscious knows between negative and positive and if you're putting on a false persona of, of being positive but underneath it all i suppose it's like the the um the duck you know looking calm above the water but then you've got these legs running um paddling like hell under underneath um you know we do have to deal with those issues that that create the anxiety within us and we, we and by dealing with them we can help to um we can help to repair the traumas and i know this because it's something that i am working on myself anyway right so again i'm sorry i digress um so, or if you try to only focus on the positive without dealing with the negative, you'll be okay for days or weeks, but then fall back and crash hard into old patterns, which are always lurking under the surface due to not being dealt with. But between these two, the second path is the more important one. You can't do without it. In fact, some subconscious issues can be healed simply by, by the positive energy infused into this psyche via the second path. For instance, instead of doing all this shadow work, trying to heal the wound in the subconscious rooted in resentment over why your mum or dad hurt you in some way, just by resonating more with the divine values, you automatically shift into a mode of understanding and compassion, which otherwise might be impossible to reach from a place of hurt ego. Now, that may sound like it's contradicting what I've just said. How I read that is not actually um, using false positivity to bury the negative it's flipping your mind so you're not you're not burying it you're you're simply flipping your mind of how to deal like so for example today i got to the stables nancy has done what she's done she's injured herself quite badly and that could have put me into onto a real downer because when my animals aren't well i'm not happy but instead i flipped it and decided that it was fixable she should have antibiotics so she needed stitches where she would have to have stitches i've got the money to pay for the vet bill so it's not as if it's you know the anxiety around money and i just completely flipped how it made me feel and likewise if i feel myself going into a bit of a slumber for whatever reason i flip it um but what I now need to work on is not turning to food to cut for to comfort for comfort. So, to answer your question, the simplest thing to to create deep transformation is to start painting, figurat figuratively speaking, an a mental and emotional picture of the new state you want to transform toward. Which is what I've pretty much said. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> um, I do know what I'm talking about a little bit. <laughs> Um, and begin to energize that with enthusiasm and imagination, letting it displace more and more of your old mindset. That is, compile the thoughts, feelings, self-talk, life outlook, general mind mindset, etc. That, char that characterize it. Make that more and more real and vivid and alive by the amount of mental and emotional energy, energy you put into it. Then you'll start merging with it and patterns will displace the old ones you're moving away from. What you're doing there is rewriting the subconscious with new patterns, but in a cool terminology, what you're really doing there is creating the ether is creating an etheric astral thought form, a holographic template of the new state. Now, Bruce Whit Lipton is really good um, at helping you understand the rewriting of the subconscious. Another um, good phrase I used to say a lot is, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. I love you, I'm sorry please forgive me, thank you, that's Ho'oponopono, and the guy who um, came up with that phrase was Hawaiian, um, and apparently by using that phrase, he healed um, a prison full of prisoners, um, so energy is very, very powerful, as has been proven this evening with sitting around the field for five hours waiting for my horse to eat thinking she was you know how long was she going to strike for and i sat in the field did some emotional freedom technique 10 minutes later she gets her head down and eats 
Um, and yes, it's a little bit harder for her because, you know, she's she's got a bit... But anyway. Right. So now, since the new state is actually, actually your true estate, i.e. more in line with your higher self, what you're actually really doing is creating a thought form that acts as a bridge between your current state and your higher truer spiritual state. In a way, you could call this a macabre as it's a subtle energy vehicle that transports you between realms or states of being in this case. So he then goes on to say, regarding the above, the above repost, here are specific examples of weeding the garden, long path, and planting water in the seeds, short path. Short path, loving kindness, meditation, Buddhism utilizes the heart chakra. Silver mind method links conscious to subconscious via visualized interface in an alpha theta state. Heartfelt devotional prayer to one's deity also uses heart chakra, directs attention toward higher self, divinity, builds thought form that acts as vehicle for divine intelligence to operate through. Affirmations and manifesting applied towards self-improvement rather than acquiring material wealth. Contemplation of big questions, mysteries while consulting your intuition as you work it out logically. Entering and maintaining the, the state of self-awareness like the I am meditations of Ramana Maharshi or Nizagadatta Maharaji. Um, I actually did um, um, Ramana Maharshi last night. I've never heard of him before. It was a half an hour meditation and I actually went quite deep. Um, I've been struggling to go deep in my meditations recently. Um, and I know it's mental blocks because... I have, I have, a, I, I tend to block um, what I know what's good for me. And so again, that's something else that I'm working on. And I now realise what it was because I actually went back to an experience that I hit, had in my 20s, which I'm not going to talk about um, this evening. But I basically, I believe, um, jump timelines. Um, it was, it was just really bizarre. I ended up hyperventilating and, and had to have a brown bag. But anyway, I'll talk about that another time. And I think that's why I block. Um, like I went, I got to DM, um, very, very close to um, natural DMT through breath work. I was with a friend. And just as I was going really, really deep at the end of the breath, I started laughing. Um, and again, I blocked allowing um, whatever was to come. I blocked it. So, um, so that's Ramana Maharshi um, or Nizagadatta Maharshi. Um, I'll I'll pop this in the in the description box so you can go off and read it yourself. And lastly, psychic sense organ growth systems. Robert Bruce's book Energy Work is an example. Many others out there. And again, I've downloaded that. So the long path, self remembering, fourth way, a form of mindfulness and lucidity. Mindfulness, medita sorry, mindfulness meditation, aka metacognition, also a Buddhist and yogic technique. Willpower applied towards self-control, self-mastery, self-awareness. Sublimation, transmutation of base impulses and negative emotions. Neutral, detached witnessing of them, Buddhist techniques. Or see Stephen Wal Walinsky's books. Inner shadow work, discovering one's wounds, traumas, negative programs and healing, releasing them. Entity attachment removal and etheric cord cutting, best done via hypnosis, self-hypnosis or being in, in a mild OBE sleep perilous state. So there we are. Um, I hope you found some use in that. Like I say, I'll, I'll pop it in the description um, box below so you can have a read of it yourself. Um this is a spiritual war and it's really important to not engage your energy with what they're propagating um and i hope you're learning these things from my little my little channel um i'm on this journey we're all on this journey um i actually feel like i've accelerated through these last three years from being like kermit the frog and engaging and getting into all these arguments online and you know sharing hoping to wake people up to where i am now and looking at the esoteric and getting really deep. But my chat with Dan is going to be, it won't be this chat that I do with him, but he just, he's discovered something in Slovakia, which is absolutely fascinating. Fascinating. I'm going to give you a hint. Time travel. Somebody's built time travel and it's full of esoteric stuff. It's just, anyway, 
I'm, I'm, I was really excited about um, him sending me this stuff. Right, I shall speak to you all soon, guys. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.